You know, Shit Gets Better is a lot of people's favorite song in my show, and it is the most fun to perform. It's where everyone's dancing and singing and shouting and singing along and just remembering that no matter what we go through, no matter who we are, no matter who we love, that we're gonna go through stuff in our lives. It doesn't matter how much we work on ourselves, we're gonna go through stuff in our lives. But it gets better. When everything is on top of me, then I feel I cannot breathe. My glass is empty, I need a drink, a shot of sobriety. Welcome to the kingdom, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here today for our last kingdom of the year. Our last kingdom of 2020. And this that we're in together, this is kingdom number 24. 24 sessions that we've had together. And if this is your first time here, I want you to just type first time into the chat box so that we know this is your first time. Welcome, and you'll see our whole community welcome you here. Hello, Trey. The community has missed you the past couple of weeks. You can see we've really built a family here. And hello to all of you who've been here every session, every week, and continue to come back. And hello to all of you who watch the replay and join us in that quantum virtual space. 
that we're all in together. And so as we say goodbye to 2020, like Amy said, and hello to 2021, I wanted to do a very special session today. And in today's session, well, I'll tell you what today's session is going to be about in a And hello, welcome everybody for the first time. And you know, the song that I played in the beginning when uh, that was from a show that I, uh, several shows that I did a couple of years ago, you know, the name of the song is, you know, excuse my French here, but it's Shit Gets Better. And the words really are, when everything is on top of me and I cannot breathe, the glass is empty, I need a drink, a shot of sobriety. And when the night gets darker, so black it's torture. And when the fight gets harder, we must get stronger. When the fight gets harder, we must get stronger. And I think that's one of the messages that 2020 has given to us in the most incredible and deep way is so much of us have anchored into this space of our own strength in a whole new way that we've never really even felt before. And it's a different kind of strength. It's a silent strength sometimes. It's a resilient strength that is us stepping into our being and our power, not by being out there and doing, but being right here now and being. And so as we dive into this episode, and we learn to come home to ourselves and we step forward into what's to come for the new year. First and foremost, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for being part of this growing community, thousands of people strong we are here today, 1,086 people here strong from all over the world. And I would love for you all to type in where you're coming in from today, to type in where you're coming in from and uh, we can see where we're all coming in from all over the world. We see Calgary and Hawaii, all the way to Australia and beyond. And I just wanna, I'm saying thank you from my heart, not from the ego place of, oh, look at all of us coming together, but thank you for showing up for you. You are showing up for you just coming here today now, just coming here the moments you've come, just doing all the work that you've done from San Diego and Long Beach and Santa Cruz to St. Louis, Missouri, from upstate New York, Pennsylvania, Hudson Valley, New York, Napa Valley, I see them all coming in, Michigan, Houston, Ontario, New Jersey, Vashon Island, Washington, and beyond. You're spreading seeds of love and change all over the planet, and I just want to thank you. And the second thing that I want to say before the clock strikes 12 and we transition into a new year is congratulations. Congratulations. You know, this has been a, this has been a big year. I'll just say the word big, right? This has been a big year. This will not be a year that any of us forget. Like, like oh, what happened that year? Like, this is a year we're going to remember. And I'm saying congratulations because you have grown. You have thrived in certain ways and you've struggled in certain ways, but you have survived and you're here. And there's this quote that I saw when I was driving in the Topanga Canyon Mountains in LA last week when I was shooting this course for Commune, which you guys will all see very soon as a new course coming out in March um, about healing conversations. And I was driving and I saw this sign that somebody had outside their house. And it said, in the end, everything will be all right. And so if it's not all right, it's not the end. And I thought that was beautiful. You know, if it's not all right, it's not the end. And so here we are together in this community, driving and diving into our growth and knowing that we have the responsibility and the accountability to take responsibility for our lives, not just for ourselves, but for everyone, for the future generation. Because as each of us steps into our own power, we ignite the waves of change for generations to come and backwards. So I love you, Jerry and Emily and Kate. Hello from London, Kate, I know you, Kate and Amy from Toronto and 
M and and just everybody. I wish I could say all of your names here today. My mom who's here every episode. Hey mom, Barbara. She's actually in the other room right now. I'm home with my family this week. And so as we dive in <clears throat> to this episode, especially for those of you who are here for the first time, what I want you to know is here at The Kingdom, we believe that all beliefs are welcome here. All biologies are welcome here. You don't have to hide who you are or yourself to be here. I imagine us in person in 2021, universe giving, <laughs> God allowing. I imagine us all together in all of our shapes and colors and sizes and ethnicities and genders and identities, just standing together. And we believe in the power of music to open our hearts and minds. That's why I played a song for us to just get started. We believe that wisdom can come from many places, not just religious texts, but from all over the place. So sometimes we'll weave in religion, sometimes it'll be spiritual, sometimes it'll be science, sometimes it's beyond that. We believe in an expanded definition of self, knowing that we're connected to one another. And here at the kingdom, we don't just honor, honor, or tolerate each other's differences, but we actually know that we're stronger because of those differences and ultimately we rise together. And so every session we'll start with a poem or music or a song, then we'll dive into a prayer, which we're gonna do in a moment together. And then you'll have a moment to do your personal prayer and then we'll jump into the teaching. And I have a special surprise for you all today um, of something that literally I wasn't planning on doing. And my whole spirit was like, nope, this is what you're doing. So somebody's gonna need the message that's coming today and it's here for you. And at the end of every episode, every session, you get a golden nugget, which is your big takeaway and a power action to help you take these teachings into action in your life. That's one of the things you know about church that I always felt was missing you know, is how do we take these esoteric or these spiritual or these beautiful, inspiring teachings and not just inspire our minds and hearts, but turn that inspiration into action so that we can make an impact in our lives and in the world in a very tangible way. And so, you know, one of my commitments with the kingdom and with everything that I do, every program, and you'll hear me say this again later, is that my true, true, true feeling with my, like my main commitment as a teacher, whatever they want to, you know, whatever title y'all want to give me, is I'm not here to talk about change. I'm here to help you actually change something. There are lots of conversations about change, about change, but very few conversations that actually help you change something. And my commitment is every time you're with me, no matter what setting it's in, I don't care if it's on Instagram, live, Inside Timer, an online course, or the kingdom, or the podcast, or beyond, I always wanna bring you something that helps you actually change something in your life and helps you transform. And we'll talk a little bit more about some deeper ways we'll be able to do that together in 2021 because I have some exciting things coming to you. So all of that being said, let us dive into our prayer. And I love seeing all of our regulars here today for our final session together. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for opening our hearts and our minds. Thank you for giving us the commitment and the discipline and the ability and the health and the presence and the awareness to come here today and to be here now in this moment. I am so grateful and so thankful for this incredible community. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for allowing us to create this web of change that you are weaving through us and with us. And today, as we go into our lesson of coming home to ourselves with our very special guest who's coming to us virtually, may we all be fully present May we all open our hearts and our minds to hear exactly the message that we needed to hear, even if it wasn't the message that we knew we needed to hear or that we were looking for. Let us hear the exact message that we need to take our lives to the next level and to step into the fullness of who we are in 2021 and beyond, but starting now. We thank you. We love you. We honor you, and we are here together in your service and glory. 
This is your moment now to welcome in your personal prayer or intention. I'll be quiet for about 60 seconds. Welcome in your prayer now. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing us together. May this kingdom continue to glow and flourish. As we spread waves of change and hope and love around the planet, may our numbers multiply so that we can spread this message of love and hope throughout the world. Thank you for using me at your service. Thank you for using us at your service. May this year and all the lessons we've learned and all that's to come in the next year be blessed for transformation and growth and good. So it is. Ashe, aho, salam, shalom, awen, amen, satnam, om. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. Here we are in the spirit of prayer. Here we are rising together. And as we go into today's session, which is going to be something special for you all, today's session is called The Power of Homecoming. Now, I know the name might feel a little different to you, but I want you to listen to me carefully. Because as we talk about the power of homecoming, what we're talking about is coming home to yourself. What we're talking about is when you feel lost, how do you, how do we come home to ourselves? Because as we go throughout this year and we continue to elevate and evolve and change and go through challenges and who knows what the hell 2021 is about to bring, right? Like as we go through these moments, we think about on honestly coming back to ourselves. And when I say honestly, it's what does it mean to be in truth with our true selves, not the personality self. I don't know how many of you guys how many of you all watched Soul from this movie that's out by Pixar? Woof! Incredible, right? And so if you haven't watched it, Disney Plus, get on it right away. And talking about not just coming back to that personality self, not coming back to the things that you're doing, but coming back home to yourselves. You know, this space that we're in is, is, is a home for us. But there's that home within you that's greater than you that helps us come back every time we're lost and find our way back on track. And my special guest today is someone named Dr. Tema. Dr. Tema. Dr. Tema. And I don't know how many of you know Dr. Tema, but her Instagram posts, I'm just going to put, put a few of them up here. Her Twitter and Instagram posts will get you together. And this is how uh, I just want to make sure you all have her name properly. It's Dr. Tema. Okay, I'm going to put that up on the screen really quick for you all. And Dr. Tema has her own podcast called The Homecoming Podcast, and it's incredible. And Dr. Tema has been one of those people who I actually interviewed on my podcast when it was called Motivation for Black People, and then evolved and we built this beautiful kind of working colleague relationship, friendship, and her accounts have blown up. And the reason they've blown up is because she's speaking such deep truth. So I just wanted to pull, before I have her interview for you all, I just wanted to pull a few of her quotes and I want you to listen to them like a meditation and hear what lands in you. And then I'd love to hear your responses in the comments, in the chat box, of what lands for you when you hear these. So I'll, I'll read them a little slowly. So here's the first one. Insecurity and fear will have you running from goodness and chasing foolishness. 
as clarity and confidence come, the pattern shifts. As clarity and confidence come, the pattern shifts. So just notice what you feel. Close your eyes and take that in. Where does that land in your life when you come home to yourself? Insecurity and fear, fear will have you running from goodness and chasing foolishness. I want you to see if you can personalize these quotes and see where you've done these in your life because we've all done this, all of us. There's no shame and blame. Here's another one. In the wrong relationship, friendship, or job, you will feel like a burden, but in the right place, you will know you're a blessing. Feel that. How does that truth layer on top of your life? Where is there a relationship, friendship, or place that you felt a burden or feel a burden? And if, and if you don't feel anything, don't force it. Just notice what arises. Beautiful. Here's another one. Instead of bragging about playing chess in your relationships while others are playing checkers, consider the possibility of not playing games in the matters of the heart. Don't she get you together? Instead of bragging about playing chess in your relationships, ooh, I've got this, while others are playing checkers because you think they're less than you, or they're not doing it right, or they're different, or whatever it is that you feel, consider the possibility of not playing games in matters of the heart. And then finally, you're gonna be glad you didn't settle. You're going to be glad that you did not settle. You're going to be glad you didn't settle. I can feel a few of you feeling that one. And so in a moment here now, I am going to play a special interview that I did with Dr. Tema. And this interview is a part of a series that I did for our Manifest New Year's Eve event. And I, what I did is I interviewed some of the people whose voices have transformed my life the most. And we're creating a compilation of the best moments for our Manifest New Year's Eve event. And then on New Year's Day, or right around then, we're putting all the interviews in their full length, and they're only about 20 or 30 minutes each, out in full for you to hear the inspiration from people like Young Pueblo and Sianna Sherman and Dr. Dan Siegel and Dr. Sarah King and Vanessa Inn and Christy Christensen and the incredible guests that we have, including Dr. Tama. And so a lot of you all have been um, asking me, what is our plan <laughs> for New Year's? And I just want to give you all the plan before we go into this so that you guys all have a clear understanding of what it is that we're doing for New Year's as a community this year to make sure that you're not missing anything. So this is what we're doing for New Year's going into 2020 and 2021. So as you know, in, in our community, you know, I've kind of like claimed for us New Year's Eve during the day. And so at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern, New Year's Eve during the day, the 31st during the day, we have Manifest New Year's Eve, Manifest 2021. And it's totally free. It's a three hour masterclass where you get a workbook and all of these incredible things to write your vision, mission, and goals for the new year and learn how you might be holding yourself back and sabotaging yourself. And I, I talk about it as like a spiritual pregame for your evening activities. And this started five years ago with just some friends at my apartment and now it's grown into a global event. And so I'm putting the links and everything here just for those of you who need it. And I'll also put the links in the chat box in a moment. And then the second thing, this is in addition for this year, and this is really exciting, is I'm doing something special on New Year's Day for the first time. And it's in collaboration with Esalen, the institute that many of you have heard me talk about, and a company called Livekick. And we're doing a New Year's Day party, same time as New Year's Eve, 11 a.m. on New Year's Day. And it's called A Journey of Mind, Body, and Ritual. And so what this is, is this is a journey, and it's going to be different than New Year's Eve, 
because this is now we're in the new year. We're in New Year's Day. And what's going to happen is we're going to all come together and we do a deep teaching and practice and ritual together. And then you'll actually have options, kind of like if you were at a conference or a yoga festival, and there's three different teachers that are going to be teaching classes, a slow flow movement class, a rest and relaxation class, a power movement class, a vinyasa class, and you're going to be able to get in all body types. We have stuff for everybody, all body types, all physical types, and you'll choose your class to go to, to embody the teachings and what you're bringing into your life. And then we all come back together at the end for a big ritual. And there's live DJs and incredible things. And so that one's with live kick. And that one has a small charge um, because we have so many teachers. Manifest New Year's Eve is free. New Year's Day has um, a small charge. And then finally, I'm going to put all these links in here in the chat box for you. And you can find the times and everything um, in, in the info. But everything on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day starts at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then finally, this is the big one, and this is the y'all are the first ones seeing it, okay? January 4th, our community together, and many of you are already on the wait list. I'm announcing it here at the Kingdom before I've even put the email out to the wait list. We're starting our program of 40 days to transformation. 40 days to transformation, and what this is about, listen to me carefully, is it's a 40 day program that we're gonna go through together. You're gonna be put into small team transformation groups. That's optional if you want, a four to five people in your time zone. And you'll have a 40 day practice with a short 12 minute audio guided meditation from me every day for 40 days. And you'll have live sessions every week with me and special guests and a workbook. And here's the big vision for me with this program, okay? It's not just about creating your vision. It's about living your vision. Not just about creating the vision, it's about living it. And so how do you put this shit into action? We've done enough podcast listening and enough talking and enough reading and enough all the quotes. How do you take all this that you've learned and put it into your life so that you can live your truth? Live it. And so that starts January 4th, but here's the deal, registration opens tomorrow, but I'm giving you all the link today. And for the next three days, we're doing a special pre-sale just to the people that were on the wait list and you here at the kingdom. So if you go to that link, you'll get on the pre-sale and I'll put it again in at the end for us, but just copy and paste those. Okay. So there's the beautiful thing is, uh, we have scholarships available and there's no application process. There is an application process for the scholarships, but there's no application process to get in. You can just come in and it's time. This welcomes everybody and it's time for us to transform. So Catherine, you will be there and so will everybody else. So I'm going to start in just a moment, but I see a couple questions here. Ah, great. Somebody, Monique said, how many hours do the events last for? So both New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, which I'm putting here on the screen again for you, are from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. There'll be some short breaks. Pacific time. So th they're both three hour events. Okay. And so you're welcome to come to all of them. You're welcome to come for some. And if you are on the wait list, you you'll get this link tomorrow, but you can also sign up today. So it's up to you. Okay. I'm just giving it to you all here early. All right. So now that I'm done and you know, this for me was about just making sure it's clear for you all and you know, what's coming in our community, because I know so many of you want to be involved. And uh, you'll see on the 40 Days to Transformation page what this is all about. So without further ado, I'm bringing all of this to you because one of my promises for what we're doing for New Year's is that everything that we're getting into this year, what's coming for us, for us, our community in 2021, is it's not just about change. It's about transformation. Those of you who are on with me and Chip Conley have heard, things change all the time. Things change all the time. You change your clothes every day. Things change on the outside all the time. We change presidents, we change leadership, we change houses, we change, everything changes. But nothing really sticks. There's no movement if we haven't transformed. And so one of my main intentions and promises with everything that we're doing in 2021 and beyond is for real, deep transformation. So you ain't got to come back and keep doing this shit over and over. 
It's time to make a move. And so with these interview series with Dr. Tema, hers, they're all incredibly powerful and something about hers felt important for you all to hear before you go into the new year. And it's this lesson of coming home to yourself. And so without further ado, I'm going to welcome you to the interview with Dr. Tama. You're the first ones hearing the full thing. And in the chat box, what I'd love for us to do is I'll be there with you all as we're watching this interview as a community together. I want you to be fully present and I'll prompt us with some questions in the chat box. And I want you all to be in discussion in the chat box of what comes up for you as we're energetically and quantumly together with Dr. Tama and coming home to ourselves. Here is Dr. Tema with Coming Home to You. Hey everybody, this is Justin Michael Williams and I am so excited to bring you, you know, one of my promises for this series for the start of the year was to bring you the voices that I thought were the most impactful from 2020 and the most important to be highlighting and making sure that we heard not just in our minds and in our ears, but in our hearts in 2021 and beyond. And there is no one better that I could think than to bring you, like I, I sent the email asking her to come with my fingers and toes crossed, okay? And so I got here on the line with me, Dr. Tama, Dr. Tama. Yay! <laughs> so excited to have you here. And for those of you who don't know Dr. Tama, first of all, you need to get on her Instagram and on her Twitter and your whole life will be changed every day, okay? <laughs> and because the, the quotes are unbelievable and I'll pull one up in just a moment that I love. And Dr. Tama is a minister, a licensed psychologist, and a sacred artist. And one of my favorite things that I've, but I hear you say, you know, at the beginning of pretty much every single one of your podcast episodes is that your work takes you on a journey home to yourself. Yes, it. absolutely. Yes. Well, I appreciate you having me. And it is so important that we reconnect with ourselves. We have been wandering for many reasons. Mm -hmm. It's so good to come home. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about as we've talking about endings and beginnings and this ritual that we put ourselves through at this kind of random date that we've decided to put ourselves through it. You know, some of us do it on our birthdays too, or different moments. And I, I love this concept of coming home to yourself. And so in this process of ending and beginnings, it feels like there's this middle ground or in between ground of this kind of like coming home to yourself. And so when, when people hear that, it sounds nice, but what does that really mean? Yeah. You know? It is living authentically and really being aware of what you think, what you feel, what you need, what you want. Because with the busyness of life, even in a pandemic, especially in a pandemic, we can lose sight of ourselves. We can erase ourselves. We can assume that other people's thoughts are our thoughts. Uh, we can live a life that is in constant reaction to everything that is happening. So if I am just reacting, I'm not authentically living. It is just everything is in response to everyone else. Yeah. And so to come home is to have a sense of inner peace, a sense of clarity, a sense of uh, groundedness in who I am. Mm. And that that is healing. That is healing. And you know, when I hear you say the thing in the beginning, you know, one of the things that we're doing in the Manifest New Year's event, which for those of you who are watching this and are not on that, it's totally free. You can get access to it anytime. I'll put the link below. And um, we're doing visioning for this, that simple reason of what do you actually want? But one of the things that I think is so important that you highlight in so much of your work, Dr. Tama, is when we're asking that question, what do you want? It's like, who is doing the choosing? Like who is doing the wanting, you know, and what part mm -hmm. of ourselves? And so can you help us understand that a little bit more to how to get clear? Yes, there are so many shoulds. You know, we get messages from so many things around us that tell us what our ideal should be, you know, and your ideal may come from, well, my mother always said, or my, <laughs> you know, my parents always said, or um, my religion said I have to, or my culture says I have to, or social media comparison says I have to post this or be this or do this. And so 
you know, we hear what everyone else is saying and, and that we are bombarded with media, right? We are bombarded with these, these images from, from childhood. You know, we have been uh, force-fed an idea of what is beautiful. We've been yeah. force-fed an idea of like, who gets to be intelligent? We've gotten, you know, force-fed this idea of what does success look like? And maybe it's not a fancy title, but you're living your dreams, you know? And so for us to shed all of the shoulds and get to truth, yeah. that is what homecoming is all about. Because in the eyes of the world, you might look successful and we know we can curate an experience on social media that looks like success. But when I say homecoming is at midnight, right? When nobody else is there, when nobody else sees what's going on on the inside, that's yeah. what home yeah. is. And that, and the, and just for, to pin that for everybody, your podcast, the homecoming podcast, just so everybody. Yes, can absolutely. So I would love for you all to follow me on this journey and, and I will be following you as a co-journey experience because I have to do my own homecoming. And so it's on YouTube and iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, homecoming with Dr. Tama. And, and I would love amazing. for you to join us. It is oh, amazing, y'all. Just thank amazing. You. It's like, thank and it will get it get you together too, <laughs> real quick. Like, whoop. <laughs> like, and ah. you know, and that leads me into your, you know, your Twitter and your Instagram account that I think has really just, you know, in the last year for sure. Yes. You know, yes. and and you've been doing this work obviously much more than just the last year. But I think the pointedness at which this comes, I think hits a lot of us. And to be honest with you, I think for like the black and brown folks out here, yes. right? Mm -hmm. It hits us in a way that it's like, it reminds me of like my grandma telling me like, mister, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna say that word. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I had a few other words coming to mind, but <laughs> pay attention, you know? And so I wanna put one up on the screen real quick that, yeah. I, that you just posted pretty recently that I thought was beautiful is <clears throat> relationships are complicated. Forgive yourself for the times you stayed as the house burned down around you. Forgive yourself for the times your past caused you to run without giving the present a chance to grow. My gosh, mm. you know, and I, yeah. I know a lot of people in this new year are manifesting new relationships, their change in their current relationship, all this kind of stuff. So unpack this a little bit. Yes, yes. And it was so amazing with the post. And a lot of people said, I'm number one, or I'm the second one, or they would say, I've done both. Uh, and I can say with honesty, I have done both. Yeah, me too. Uh, and so that first one is when we stay too long, yeah. you know, the times that you have been in circumstances and you know, and as I was writing it, I'm thinking about romantic relationships, but it can be friendships as well. When you know, you know, it's not good for you. And um, it says, as you're staying, as the house burns down around you. Yeah. So, you know, what gets burned down? Uh, your self-esteem, uh, your hope, your trust, sometimes your sense of safety, whatever those things are, uh, are deteriorating and yet we're holding on. And, and there's no shame in that right? When I say it, because there are a lot of reasons we hold on. One, we often get told that relationships are work, which they are, but uh, at are we jointly working or is somebody working to sabotage you, to destroy you, to break your confidence and spirit so they can feel better about themselves, right? That that is not what we want to endure. And so we often um, hold on thinking like, well, I just have to keep working at it. And I'll say, especially people who are successful, because you're like, I, I know how to get things done, right? So if I just I put my mind to it, this is going to work. We're going to figure this out. I'm going to fix this. <laughs> I'm going to fix it. Well, the house just burning down, but I'm going to fix it. And, uh, you know, another reason why we stay in a, a burning house is um, feeling like I don't want to either give up on myself or give up on the person. Yeah. And, you know, Usually things are not bad every moment of the day. So that keeps people's hope alive. Of like, oh, maybe it's getting better. Like it's been, you know, tears and screaming and crying, but today was a good day. And now like you're back in it. So thinking about uh, forgiving yourself for the times that you wanted to believe, even when everything was showing you and telling you get out of there. And so what I just like to say is, you know, instead of 
just grieving the lost time is to appreciate your present now, your present awareness, right? Yeah. It may have took, taken a while, but I have clarity and I'm going forward. And then the second category is when um, often because of past pain and past trauma and past difficulty, we're quick to run. And so, you know, I, I do a lot of counseling with people who have been in bad relationships and now want a good one, but can be what we call hypervigilant. So we're looking for a red flag, right? Because it's not going to happen again. So it's like, what'd you say? I'm out of here. I'm, I'm gone. Here. Like so fast, you didn't even know what happened, okay? <laughs> Just out the door. Right. It's like, wait, what, what went wrong? <laughs> you know, so we're walking around with our hearts guarded and we have our, our mental bags packed that at any moment, we're ready to like shut it down. And so then sometimes we miss uh, the opportunity to really get to know people. Uh, because of that fear and so forgiving ourselves because some people then have regrets about like maybe that could have been something good and I sabotaged it or messed it up um, so we give ourselves grace compassion and awareness so then we can go forward with balance um, I don't want to stay in a house that is destroying me and I don't want to run because of my fear from the past that is not really based in what's happening in the present yeah, and so the middle ground that we want to find ourselves in, how do you define that then? How do we know when we're in that sweet spot? What does that look like? Yeah, so the middle place is mutuality, mm. reciprocity, two-sided relationship. Some of us are either in savior mode, where you're like, you think of dating partners as a project. I'm going to fix them, right? When I when I get through with them, they're going to be amazing. <laughs> a couple of years ago, that was my commitment to never do again. I had caught that in my shadow and I was like, listen. Yeah, yeah stop. We it. did no more students, okay? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so we resign. You know, we resign from, from, from being the, the, the teacher, the leader, the, the maker of other people. And then also... Uh, surrendering the, the fantasy of uh, the, the distressed person who will be rescued. Yeah. And that's when you have that idea of like, nothing in my life will be right until someone shows up to make it right, right? And so I'm not doing any work on myself. I'm just waiting and hoping the right person will transform me. And so uh, instead I'm looking for, you know, you, 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 you understand relationships to be mutual care mutual growth, mutual respect, um, a place in which I am honored and I honor the other person, um, where I pay attention to issues that are of a concern. I'm sorry, are you hearing all that? It's fine, yeah. Okay. I'm like, yeah, it's son. not as loud as you think, yeah. Okay, I'm like, would you? <laughs> we all, but you know what's so funny is Zoom blocks it out and we all got kids screaming in the background <laughs> and stuff. So everybody's used to it now. Before before the pandemic, people would have been like, this is not acceptable. Right, now people it's are not like, acceptable. Right, yeah, there, there's, <laughs> some there's, there's some kids back there. There's some kids back there doing something, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the mutuality and reciprocity and then also um, the middle ground is um, vulnerability. Yeah. Right? Is that I'm going to be honest and stick around to see who you are, you know, so that I am not uh, running from shadows. Yes. This is so beautiful. And I think I love the thing that I, I, the compassion at which you very sweetly but fiercely mm -hmm. like give it to us in these messages, you know, it's the perfect dosage of words because you, the, I love what you started with this is forgive yourself. Like that's what it is. It's not like a lot of times we see memes and quotes that are like, you've been staying too long. You should have left. You know what I mean? Like you blah, blah, blah. And it's just yes. like, no, like hold that compassionate, sweet space. Yeah. You know? Yes. It's so important. And that's why, you know, in the podcast, I often use uh, the we, you know, as the reminder of like, we are not like just divine teacher who gets it all right. And, you know, you all are <laughs> all fallible messing it up. <laughs> it's like, no, I get it, right? I get it, not just from what I have read, but what I have lived. And so then, you know, it being tender with ourselves. Yeah, it's so beautiful. You know, as I'm thinking about going into the new year, and, and a lot of people creating these visions and wanting to step into 
a new dawn of their life. And given everything that has happened with 2020, I think a big thing, like one of the funny memes that I saw early in, in 2020 was like, all right, none of this shit was on my vision board. You know what I mean? Like, none what? of it. None of it. <laughs> and so, the, but the interesting thing is, is it gives us a deeper way to look at manifesting and visioning in the new year. So given that, like, how are we and how are you looking at it differently this year? Yes. One of the things uh, that has been highlighted for me this year um, is the not chasing and striving after things that are not fulfilling. Mm. That there has been a forced reordering of priorities of like, what is really important? And also, what are the things I took for granted? There's some things we didn't put on the board that now you would to be able to hug your loved ones, right? To be able to go and see people and, you know, not have to think twice about giving them a hug or, you know, talking to them in person. And so our vision uh, for the future needs to shift based on the things we took for granted and also the things that we chased that are just not really important. Yeah. And, um, I think an important piece for me is not thinking about returning to the old way, yeah. but what are the ways that this year has transformed me that I actually want to hold on to? You know, one of the things for me is, you know, before the pandemic, the weekends were like jam packed for me, going this place and that place and doing this and doing that. And then Sunday night, I'm exhausted and having to start the week all over again. And so with COVID and everything shut down, it's like the weekend has actually been restoration time, right? The weekend has actually been a weekend of stillness. So, you know, when I wake up Monday morning, I actually feel like I've had breath and a break. Yeah. And so that is, you know, something I want to be mindful of is not then just imagining how can I get back to 2019? It's like a part of that rhythm was, not, was dysfunctional. Right, a part of that rhythm, I don't want that anymore. And so integrating and creating a new vision based on the awakenings that came up for us this year. Mm, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And that, that resonates so strong, you know, is strongly in terms of thinking of, yeah, this year has been challenging for so many people. And like, what have you learned? Like, what do you want to keep from this? Because there's been some reorganization that I think for so many of us, like I know for those of us who been tr were traveling all over the place and doing this, and now I've had my ass in one place, you know, for a whole <laughs> year almost, which I can't even tell you the last time that happened. Right. I'm like, oh, oh, this is what it feels like, like to just yeah. be home mm -hmm. in myself and in my space and with my community and with the people who I'm the closest to. You know, right? It's true. How many of the relationships that we have are transactional? Mm -hmm. When this thing fall, you know, when this all happened, you know, it's just like right. Wow. Like, yes, yes. You get real clarity about yourself, about your peace, about friendships and relationships. You know about what matters, and so yeah. holding on to those insights as you're picturing, you know, what you want the next year to look like. Yeah, you know, as we close. And I would say, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'll please, since you would say, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it also was a reminder for me about not waiting for green lights. You know, many times we wait for uh, other people, like our future is in their hands. If, if, if someone says yes to this, or if someone gives me this opportunity, then, you know, I can make it happen. But especially I think with, with uh, Zoom and all this technology, like some of the dreams you were waiting for, you can manifest now. You can manifest it now. Uh, you could do your show now. You could write, you could, whatever it is you are dreaming up, uh, you, you can do a manifestation of it in, in your present reality. I love this. I love this so much. You know, as we, as we close down, um, I just wanna ask you what your wish is for the new year your wish for yourself and, and even your wish for humanity and all of us. Yes, I would say love and connection. You know, that so many of us have felt isolation. And, you know, I have kids who are doing the virtual online who, you know, just miss their friends and can't wait to be able to go play with them. Um, and then I know 
uh, at my church, a lot of seniors who live by themselves. Yeah. And so uh, for us to feel the vastness of love and connection, that even if you are somewhere physically by yourself, that we are not alone. And that's my hope for myself and for all of us. That's beautiful. Dr. Tema, thank you so much for oh, being with us today. You are welcome. Fast and powerful, <laughs> right? Fast and so powerful. Dr. Tema, everybody. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do with this moment right now is to dive right in to a little practice, to a little practice together. And so I want to go right into the heart. And as we go into the heart, we think about how it is that we can come home to ourselves. To your truth, not running from shadows. I love this quote from her. How can we be vulnerable enough to not be running from our shadows? That's big. But you know, a piece of that vulnerability, a piece of it is knowing that you can trust yourself to make a change, that you can trust yourself to show up for yourself. Just like Casey Crown was talking about a few weeks ago with boundaries. It's what is it that we're protecting? Not just what are we pushing away, but having that adaptability to know that we are not going to abandon ourselves in 2021. We're not going to abandon ourselves, period. Okay, starting now. And when we do, it'll happen. How do we come back home to it? And so I'd love to do just a short practice together now. Place your hands over your heart. We'll do a quick listening practice. We'll listen with it. Go ahead and take a deep, full breath in. And a deep breath out. Again, full breath in and a breath out. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. If you'd like to keep them open, that's fine too, but just keep a blurred out vision. And now I'm gonna ask you a few questions. And I want you to just notice what arises for you as I ask the questions. There's nothing to do about them. There's no stories to make about them. Just notice what arises and you'll see what we do with it later. Inhale, exhale. First question. Where do you need to come home to yourself? Say it again, where do you need to come home to yourself? Just notice what comes up for you. See if you can be specific. Here's your second question. What is an easy way that you can remind yourself to come back home to yourself when you get lost? <laughs> I'll ask that a little more simply. What is an easy way that you can remind yourself to come back home to yourself anytime you get lost? What is an easy way? And finally, 
how will you know when you're home with yourself? How will you know when you're home with yourself? And how will you know when you're not? What are the signs that the house is burning down? Just take a moment to see what arises for you in this space. And take one more breath in and one more breath out. And come back. And I'd love for you all to just type in whatever it was that arose for you in the chat box. Just type in whatever arose for you in the chat and just whatever it is. It doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to, they don't have to all be connected to one another. What came up? I love this and we'll see what arises. Monique, we know we are home when we have inner and outer peace at home in community and humanity. You know, for me, <clears throat> I think a big piece of my Coming home, coming really truly home to myself is really coming home into my physical body in a new way. I've been sharing a lot about my journey this year with my body and just coming home to the truth of what my body is without trying to force it into something it's not or change it into something it's not, but just to be fully in flow and at home in it and feeling that sense of ease and confidence and knowing I'm out of alignment is when I'm trying to force it into something that it's not in a way that doesn't bring joy. It doesn't mean I don't work hard sometimes, but in a way that doesn't bring joy and feeling in a sense of ease in my physical body. So that's where I took it today. And I think many of you've heard some of the work that I've been doing on this this year. And beautiful. One way you will know is when you have come home. One way you will know is when the physical space you're in, your house, reflects who you're at reflects who you are. And Melanie, touching your heart. And Jerry, when you feel anxious and stressed, you're going doing too much, you gotta come back. When things feel too hard and too much like a struggle, you know you're on the wrong track, like you're swimming upstream, Emily, I got you. Evie, to slow down and check in with myself often, to practice radical acceptance. And Amy, insecurity, recognizing that when I question my ability and intelligence and worthiness, I'm giving into a lie. It is self-abandonment. Eric, comparing myself to others is a signal that I've gone away. So don't forget these things. Loving your body, Steph, and feeling you're enough. I'm with you. Beautiful. And so I want you all, who everybody who's active in the chat box right now as we transition, to find someone else's, just scroll up and find someone else's thing that they've said, okay? Just anything that they've said. And I want you to write an affirming comment back to that person. So just pick anyone. And in the chat, write an affirming comment back to whoever you choose. And you could choose multiple people if you want, just so that we can feel us praying for each other. Feel us coming back to each other. And Magdalena, I see you. I bless you, sister. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Spiritual beauty, Cynthia. And so as we're doing that, and we all are continuing to come home to ourselves, I just want to give you this quote again. How can we be vulnerable enough to not be running from our shadows. Beautiful. Eric, I do really love your quote, you know, comparing yourselves to others is a moment that you know that you've gone away. That's beautiful. And I love you all showing each other love here. And so let us continue to our power action and then our golden nugget for today's practice and today's session. So your power action is very simple. I'm keeping it very tangible for you all today. <laughs> it's to come to the things that we're doing for New Year's. Like 
they're free. If you, if you don't have money, you can't afford it. We got scholarships. If you can't afford it, you can help give people scholarships. We are making the end of this year count big, big, bigger than you could ever imagine. <laughs> we have so many surprises for you all in a few days. And so New Year's Eve, we have Manifest 2021 at 11 a.m. Pacific time until 2 p.m. On New Year's Day, we have the Esalen and Live Kick New Year's Day party with some amazing teachers that are going to be doing embodiment practices. And you can register for that on livekick.com slash Justin. And then finally, this is the big one, okay? 40 days to transformation. The work that we're doing on New Year's is leading us up to be able to do this deep work. New Year's, we're, we're creating the vision, we're understanding what's happening. And then how do we hold each other accountable to take this into action and actually transform? And that will start the first Monday after the new year. And I'm gonna put the link for you all again in the chat box. And I just want you to know, I love you all so much and that you are worthy, you deserve it, and you're ready. Listen to me, okay? You're ready. And I'm here to support you, I'm here with you. I am here with you and our whole community is holding you close. And watch what happens when we come together. And yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you, I'm just teasing. So here are the links. And as we close out today, I uh, just want you to take a moment to think about your golden nugget from today's teaching. What is the number one thing that you want to take from today's practice? Hands over the heart. We gave you lots of important stuff. A lot of people said amazing things in the chat box. I said some cool things. Dr. Tema said amazing things. If you could pick one thing to keep with you, what would it be? What's the one golden nugget you wanna take from today? It takes about 25 to 30 seconds to commit something to your long-term memory, so just think about it for a few moments. When you're ready, type it into the chat box so that we can see a cascade of golden nuggets coming through. Beautiful. <clears throat> and yes, several of you asked if um, somebody put in the chat if Manifest would have a replay. Absolutely. Yeah, if you can't make any of it live, um, there is a replay of all of it because I know there's some different time zones. And so I love you all so much. This is the power of homecoming. When you feel lost coming home to yourself, let us come home <sighs> with a closing prayer. God, spirit, universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for being with us together. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for protecting our bodies and our minds and the technology and everything that makes this moment possible. As this community buckles our seatbelts and fastens ourselves into our seats to blast off into the new year, may we be protected, May we take a moment to ourselves to reflect on all that we've done and learned and the ways that we've grown this year. May we give that to ourselves. May you help us give that to ourselves. And may we stand together stronger than ever now and rise up in 2021. Thank you, Lord, Spirit, God, universe for this community. We look forward to the opportunity to come together in person in 2021. Glory be. Ashe. Aho. Salam. Shalom.
Amen. 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 Love y'all. <laughs> Love y'all so much. And I'll see you in 2021. See you next year, Kingdom. Bye for now. Oh, I saw somebody just posted Unbounded. We rise up now. <laughs> <laughs>